This is Harrison's first marine timekeeper, which we call H1, and it was constructed around 1730. Harrison realised that he had three main challenges to address to make sure that this could run well at sea. Now, the first problem is motion. The most accurate clocks of the day were pendulum based. So he decided to convert the pendulum into the spring bar balance system instead to cope with the motion of a rocking ship. He also realised that you need to compensate for temperature differences. Say if you're going from London to the Caribbean, then perhaps somewhere cold, your clock or watch might speed up and slow down accordingly. So to try and factor that out, he added in these thin metal rods made of brass and steel that expand to contract at complementary rates and effectively cancel out any difference. And then finally, he realised that he needed to compensate for maintenance, for lubrication. You might be away at sea for several months. You haven't got time or the facility to do any maintenance. So he made certain components from a tropical hardwood called lignum vitae that secretes its own natural oils. So you don't need to oil it. And this was really helpful. It performed reasonably well on a sea trial. And from this, he then decided to go on and develop further timekeepers. And then he decided to have a slight change of mind and go for a watch approach instead. This went against the conventional wisdom that said that a watch wouldn't be accurate enough, but he managed to design it so that it really did keep good time and could cope with temperature variation as well. This piece, which we now call H4, performed exceptionally well on a voyage to Barbados in 1765, and it really proved that you could indeed use an accurate timekeeper at sea to measure your longitude. The problem now was to try and really break that into something that could be mass produced and made readily available. So other clockmakers took Harrison's ideas and designs and developed it into what became known as the marine chronometer. Now this became a standard navigational tool in the 1800s and crucially the ones that were the issued to Navy ships were tested here at the Royal Observatory before they were sent out to sea. So as the Royal Navy surveyors created more maps and charts around the world, they were basing all their measurements on the Greenwich Meridian and Greenwich Mean Time. This meant that by the time you get to the 1880s and people are trying to choose one meridian as the prime meridian of the world, Greenwich is the obvious choice because most of the charts are based on Greenwich already. So it really does have quite fundamental consequences.